All right. Who went to Aerosmith? Anyone? You went to Aerosmith because you're wearing sunglasses. I know you went to Aerosmith. How many people would have liked to have slept in a little bit more this morning? All right. So I appreciate everyone who made the effort to come here. I realized about 11 o'clock last night that this is the single worst timed session of the entire show. Uh, but we will try and keep it punchy. We'll try and keep you awake. If you need to go grab coffee, you know, because the only PX Grid is really exciting, but you can only make it so exciting at 9 o'clock in the morning after an Aerosmith concert. So we will try our best. Um, I'm Scott Pope, Senior Manager um, over our security ecosystem defining requirements and uh, the openness and the SDKs and so on and so forth around PX Grid. We've got Nancy and Chris who you'll hear from here in a bit. Um, what we're going to chat through is we're going to level set you on what PX Grid is, why it is, why you should care, why our customers care. Um, it is a completely open ecosystem, so all of you could Google right now DevNet PX Grid and you could access the SDK. So, and, and test resources and all sorts of stuff. So it's open out there, ready for folks to integrate to. Um, I'll talk through some, some of the use cases that we're uh, building around right now. These are just ones we're building around right now. Anything creative you come up with is fair game. Um, in fact, you might wonder, yes, I'm a Cisco guy. Why am I wearing a live action t-shirt? I'm a Cisco guy. Well, there are a couple reasons for that. First, um, they gave it to me yesterday when I was presenting in their booth, and I thought it was kind of a cool, unusual color, so I kind of liked it. But secondly, it's a really good example. We just announced two, excuse me, 10 new PX Grid partners here at the Cisco Live Show, uh, Live Action being one of them. And they're a good example of the diversity of our partners in our overall security ecosystem, and specifically within the PX Grid ecosystem. We talk about PX Grid being about exchanging security uh, context between platforms. But really, it's, it's, that's how we're targeting it right now. It's really um, pretty broadly based. We can, you can exchange anything across it. And Live Action's a really good example of that because they are a NetFlow-based um, network and application performance uh, monitoring and management platform, not security at all. But they're using PX Grid information to figure out you know, who's associated with a network performance event, what device is associated. So it's pretty broad-based. So it's a cool t-shirt and makes a good point. Um, oh, I've got a clicker. Let's see if the clicker works. The clicker's only gonna work if I plug it in, so I'll just do this instead. Yeah, let me stick in the USB stick here real quick, because I'd rather click and walk around. I'm a walker and a talker. Okay, we'll see if my Mac likes, oh, it's not gonna like that. We're not gonna do that. Okay, that's life with a Mac, unfortunately. You can walk and I can click. No, that's okay. Oh, my walking back and forth. So, let's just cut right into the chase you know, level set um, what it is and the problem we're trying to solve with PX Grid. Basically starts from the notion that our customers have a bunch of stuff in their IT environment. And everything in their IT environment has information it needs from other platforms in the IT environment to do its job better, but also has information that it can share with other platforms in the IT environment to help them do their jobs better. So it ends up being this sort of many-to-many -many sort of problem and today, we really put this integration burden on our customers. When you talk about, hey, I want to connect this platform to that platform, that platform to that platform, and so on and so forth, you end up with a spaghetti mess of basically proprietary single purpose APIs that A, don't scale beyond one or two systems, and B, is just a mess to try and work with a bunch of you know, individual proprietary platform specific APIs. That is the problem that PX Grid is trying to solve. First and foremost, enable this many to many, any to any, context sharing, both from a scalability standpoint of just purely having an architectural scale to allow a system to integrate to a variety of different systems simultaneously, but also from uh, really a developer perspective of having one framework that you can reuse over and over again to integrate different platforms. So that's what we're going to talk about. And then the other part of it is PX Grid actually has an event response mechanism that allows you as third party developers to reach into the Cisco network from a security perspective and take actions on users and devices. So if you want to quarantine a user because they're behaving badly or you want to spawn an investigation of devices traffic because it's looking strange, this is stuff you can do through PX Grid. So context exchange and event response is really what PX Grid is about. And it really boils down to three main mechanisms. It's very exciting, but it's also very simple conceptually. It's a bi-directional context sharing platform. <clears throat> So today, it's getting used 
to basically allow Cisco security platforms to share its context out with platforms like yours in the developer community. And actually we use this within Cisco to really to glue our own products together. We have integration among our security portfolio using PX Grid as well. So we use this internally as well as externally. So sharing context out from Cisco platforms and I'm going to talk about a lot of use case a lot of use cases focused on our Cisco Identity Services Engine today, or ICE product for short, which basically um, serves as a gatekeeper for every user and device coming on the network. And so it has a really good repository, real-time uh, view of all the users on the network, all the devices, what IP addresses they're associated with, what kind of devices they are. So I'll talk a lot around this, about, around this notion of user and device context as I go through a lot of examples here. But you know, a good example here in terms of why customers care about sharing that type of context out Basically, all these IT systems they have, you know, think of live action. What we did with them is, hey, I've got a network performance event and there's just an IP address there. I really want to know who that is, what AD, group, AD or LDAP group that came from, what type of device it is, maybe where on the network it came from. This is all information that we can share across PX Grid. Second use case is basically bringing context into Cisco platforms. And a good example of what we do here today is with our ICE network access policy platform, we're bringing in context from uh, MDM um, and EMM platforms, mobile device management and enterprise mobility management platforms, for us to make better policy decisions because ICE doesn't have a whole lot of information about you know, these particular devices here. And so, but the EMMs and MDMs do, so we can source that information from them and make better network access policy decisions. And then finally, we've got the third one here, which is this ability to reach through PX Grid and take a network event response. And so those are, those are three components. We're going to talk about variations on that theme as we go through here. You know, a use case for you, um, very common. This is a very generic looking slide on purpose because this is so broadly applicable to so much of the IT infrastructure, which is I'm looking at a monitoring console of some sort. It could be a security monitoring console. It could be an endpoint monitoring console. It could be a network and application performance monitoring console. But I'll get some sort of alert, and that alert basically says, hey, something bad is going on at this IP address on your network, and it looks like they're talking with this destination, and it looks like it's this port, this TCP port. And that's about all you got. So it could be a malware event, and it says that. that that's interesting information, but it's usually the beginning of a journey, not the end of the journey. You know, it usually spawns a bunch of questions of, okay, great, so I got an event. Do I care about it? Do I not care about it? And usually the answers that lead to that are things like, okay, great, who is that event associated with? What user? Do I care about that user? Is it my CEO or is it my janitor? Or someone in between? Does that user have broad access and privilege on my network? So what type of user is it? Uh, you know, is it still on my network? Having a real-time view of whether this event is still persisting and the situation is still persisting. What sort of network um, access method is associated with? Did it come over VPN? Did it come across Wi-Fi? What location did it come from? Came across Wi-Fi, okay, great. What access point did it come across? You know, building 24, second floor, what have you. Um, security information, like you know, some posture information around uh, an endpoint. All, this, all these are questions that need to be answered. And typically the way that gets done today is someone is looking in IT, is looking across seven different consoles, trying to really manually link this stuff together and visually link it together. Really the right answer is to make every console our IT managers are in a single pane of glass for whatever that task is, whether it's you know, a security malware sort of thing, whether it's vulnerability, whether it's IoT, whether it's network performance and application management. And so that's one use case of, of how we use PX Grid is to get all this information to the right places. Another example is um, just as users, as we're getting on the network, and actually Chris will talk a little bit about this later, of if you think of today, it's kind of crazy in this day and age that essentially all access and all privilege on the network, you know, I as a user, when I get on the Cisco, well, this isn't true Cisco because we deploy all this stuff, but if I was at Scott Pope Incorporated and, you know, didn't have a bunch of things deployed, basically getting on the network would be just purely dependent on who I am. Hey, I'm Scott Pope and this is my password and, you know, here's what Active Directory or LDAP uh, group I belong to and therefore privilege that I get with that and yay, hooray, I can get to everything I want. Well, that's not really such a great idea in this day and age, right? And actually, in, uh, you know, it's all called out in various reports. This one's just a quote from the Verizon Data Breach Report of, hey, a lot of the pain and suffering we're seeing around information loss, information theft, breaches, comes down to our network access policies are, are pretty awful. And 
one of the things we can do with PXGrid and do with, for example, our partner Ping Identity and ID over IP is we can actually expand using PXGrid. We can get the right context over to um, a single sign-on or identity and access management system for it to make better decisions, not just base a decision on, hey, here's uh, Scott Pope trying to access this HR application on the web, but that Scott Pope coming from my BYOD device that is registered with uh, the EMM platform, so it's been you know, okayed by the IT environment. You know, what is my posture? Uh, when am I trying to access this information? Where am I trying to access it from? Am I coming across VPN? These are all things, that's, it's crazy today that these aren't part of you know, application access decisions. But using PXGrid and starting from this whole notion of, hey, let's get the right information to the right platform so they can have either the right visibility or in this case, have the right policy, that's really important. And that's, you know, that's just a couple of you know, many use cases we could go through here, but gives you the, the idea. So where we are today, PXGrid, we just launched a general availability seven months ago. We just made it open to the ecosystem um, in January. So it's just been out, the SDK has just been out there and open for, for really six months now. In this period of time, um, we've made some pretty good headway. We have established uh, 18 PX Grid partners across nine different technology areas and we're continuing to grow very rapidly there. So um, as you can see, we have a lot of different areas that we've spooled up here, a lot around security, you know, IoT security, SIM threat defense, uh, but also non-security areas like network and application performance management, um, packet capture and forensics is actually a lot of times used for just sort of network um, forensic sort of information. So we've made a lot of headway here in a short amount of time and we've brought up two platforms within Cisco that you guys can start integrating to. Um, Cisco ICE, well developed there, and then uh, Cisco WSA we just announced and we'll start spooling up a PX Grid ecosystem around uh, Cisco WSA, the web uh, security appliance, um, later this year. And then our source fire products will be coming online um, early next year. And so the reason this is interesting is, and, you know, in case it's not clear, is the whole premise here is you as developers can integrate to PX Grid, and then you can reuse that plumbing over and over again to talk to different platforms, to ICE, to WSA, to SourceFire, also to each other. So for example, if you wanted to integrate to live action, you could, because PX Grid also allows partners to integrate with each other. If you've integrated PX Grid and you've integrated PX Grid, you now have the plumbing to talk to each other, and we'll talk about that plumbing now. But it's not just you, know, it's just, not just you to Cisco, it's amongst yourselves as well. So here's how it works. I'll give a thumbnail sketch, and I'm going to hand over to Nancy to really kind of get into it. But um, PX Grid is part, it basically resides or is hosted on our Cisco ICE platform. Um, reason for that, Cisco ICE is all about user and device policy. Well, PX Grid is really about contextual information policy, about who can access it, who can't, who can share with who. So it's a lot of the same sort of mechanisms. And basically what happens is, with ICE, we instantiate in the customer environment an instance of PX Grid, and then the customer starts figuring out, you know, among their PX Grid enabled platforms, what they want to start connecting together. So they may say, hey, we've got a location server that's PX Grid enabled, and we want to make location information available to the rest of our PX Grid enabled platforms in our IT environment. But you know what, this location, this location server, boy, I could really make that into a single pane of glass if I just had application information, identity information in it. So it needs some information to do its job better. Well, lo and behold, we have a platform here that has application information, but it needs location information. So what's gonna happen here is basically, they're going to authenticate, these platforms are gonna authenticate and authorize to the grid, which is all built into PX Grid. There's a very strong security authentication and authorization model built into PX Grid, built into our client libraries that are in, in, our, um, uh, in our SDK. So it's nothing you guys have to worry about. You just take the client libraries and all that stuff's built in there. And what they're gonna do is, once they're authorized to publish information to the grid or to consume information or subscribe information fr from the grid, they'll start doing that. So in this case, the location platform's gonna say, hey, I've got some location information, I wanna put it out on the grid. And the best way to think about the grid is basically like an information bus. It's not establishing point-to-point -point connections. We're, that's exactly what we're not trying to do because it doesn't scale and it's very messy. But instead, it's publishing once to the grid, which is basically an information bus, and anyone who wants it will subscribe to that information and pick it up. So it doesn't have to have all these point-to-point -point connections, which is really, uh, really critical for scalability. Reverse is true, application platform is gonna publish its information, 
This basically gets published out to um, what's called a topic directory, and then you can query the topic directory to see what's out there. And so in this case, uh, the location platform is going to discover that there's an application topic out there, vice versa for the application platform, discovering that there's a location topic out there, and voila, you can have a connection of sharing information here. And there are a, couple, there are a few different ways to do this. You can either continuously um, subscribe to the information in real time. So basically, any location update that gets put on the grid, if a platform uh, subscribing to it is a continuous flow in real time, it will pick it up in real time. Or you can do directed queries where you say, hey, I want to know about the specific endpoints uh, uh, location at this specific time or at this moment. So you can query to it, you can get a continuous stream, you can actually do some bulk download sort of stuff as well. And so this just repeats over and over again. You can have a variety of platforms that basically get on the grid and start sharing information. And, and they can all query each other or do a continuous flow or combinations therein. And so that's sort of it in a nutshell. And, and really the problems we we're trying to solve here you know, we've, this, you know, we've been down um, you know, the platform by platform API road. It's actually one, one of the other reasons to start on our ICE platform is it really has a need to integrate with a lot of different platforms simultaneously. So we started out with a bunch of different individual APIs and we figured out a few things pretty quickly. You know, a, a polling architecture of APIs was going to crush our system. There's just, you know, we integrate to two, three, four systems and all of a sudden it's spending all CPU time trying to get information back and forth. Secondly, um, wasn't particularly, um, is relatively brittle in terms of, as we had more APIs, you know, we basically had to go through every software release and test all those APIs. Huge test burden for us. Third, made it a real pain for you guys. Uh, oh, you want that information? Okay, well, you know, write to this API. Oh, you want that information? Oh, write to that API. And so, you know, sort of death by a thousand cuts of APIs. And then also the security is not so great a lot of times with APIs. Um, you know, a lot of times it's username and password based, right? And so once you do that, you got keys to a lot of information, which is not so great. So we want a stronger security model around this. And then also we wanted something that was highly customizable and dynamic. So this whole notion of topics, which, which Nancy's gonna go through, when you publish information to a topic, you can be very specific. So ICE has like five different topics of information that are specific to different types of use cases in our ecosystem. So we could go blah with 85 you know, attributes across 250,000 sessions, but nobody wants that. Everybody wants like the five pieces of information they want, and so we can customize that. And without a release cycle, if we need to change that, we just add or delete something from a topic. So it's not like we have to go write a new call or a new put or what have you to an API and wait for a release and a test cycle. We can basically just revise the topic and publish it out there. So very flexible from that perspective. And so that was all the context exchange. I, just, I didn't want to leave behind. We also have this within PX Grid, this uh, capability called adaptive network control, which was that third box you know, at the outset there where I talked about reaching into the Cisco network and taking an action in, re in um, response to an event on a user or a device. So this could be quarantining a user, this could be saying, hmm, looks like this user's doing something kind of funny. I want to route traffic through a deep packet inspection engine, or I want to route it through a, a packet capture engine for further investigation. So you can do this via PX Grid as well. And this is a, a very, very powerful uh, capability because if you talk to customers, if they talk about, you know, hey, we see a security event, and we need to try and do something about this user until we're able to really remediate them. Shutting them down the network often means CLIing into switches, and it's very messy, very cumbersome, and very error prone. This basically allows um, via PX Grid, our ICE platform, to essentially serve as middleware for you as developers to not care how the network's instrumented. ICE already knows how to reach into the network and do different things, divert flows, quarantine um, users and devices. And so what it allows you to do via PX Grid is just say, hey, ICE, I need to take an action on this user, and ICE will look at the policy that makes that, see if that policy is first admissible, and then if it is, figure out what needs to be done in the network to make it done. So it's a really nice abstraction for you guys if you want to actually start being able to do some things within the network. So with that, I will hand it over to Nancy. Thanks, Scott. Can you guys hear me? Good, I can barely hear myself. So quick, quick test to make sure you're awake and just for me to level set where you guys are. How many of you are familiar with Jabber? Instant messaging systems, collaboration tools, and so on. How many of you actually code, program, 
familiar with XMPP? Okay, good. Okay, so the way I think of it and how we designed this, as Scott showed you, we're really trying to establish that many, many connection point for the ability for you to better manage your network, whether it's from a security perspective or from a, a general management visibility and so on. So from that perspective, you can think of the PX grid as that ecosystem that allows you to establish that social media to do that management function, okay? So the basis underlying um, in the PX grid implementation is based on uh, the, the same foundations that are used for Jabber or WebEx, which is XMPP. How many of you are familiar with XMPP? Okay, a little bit, okay. So when we say topics, that's the XMPP speak to talk about a specific context. So in the XMPP world, a topic is basically the type of information that we're trying to relay, communicate through that transport, if you will. The second concept, as Scott was talking about, is because we are delivering a very powerful messaging system, if you will, and we're allowing multiple partners as well as multiple network elements to communicate, we really need to ensure that the authorizations are there to make sure that the threats, that we're not in, in, injecting any new threat vectors, if you will. So from that perspective, when you look at the architecture, we've made two distinctions, and that is providing a controller to define the management and security functions as well as the discovery of, um, so when you can come into the PX grid system, you know that there is the live action, sorry, I, I didn't write, the live action or a Splunk or that you've got ICE there. I know ICE is, is the underpinning right now, but so that you know the type of information that's available there, the different types of ways in which you can get that information, okay? So the control function is there to help facilitate that, but more importantly, as Scott was saying, to simplify your world of not just having to know all of the different APIs, the different data models, the different ways in which you can extract the different types of information, there is, we try to simplify it in a way that you only need to come into the ecosystem once, and that's what we mean by the single, right? You authenticate into the PX grid, and then we provide the right authorizations through the controller. The other simplification is that we provide in the SDK, the client or the agent, if you will, that in your application, you use the client, we provide, again, the single set of APIs to let you do that establishment into the grid and then do the actual work. So that's in the, in the um, management plane. Then in the data plane, as Scott was mentioning, there may be different ways in which you need the information. You may need it in real time, and that's where PubSub, do you guys understand when I say pub, PubSub? Publish, subscribe, real time, right, notifications and updates. So you may want to just get the updates as soon as there's a new presence in the network or as soon as there's a new threat event and so on coming in. Or to establish full visibility, the initialization function in your application may be that I need to establish the state before I can get the updates. You may not want that as a single um, update because that might be a very large set of information. So from that standpoint, you may be doing a directed query. So from that standpoint, we have what I'm calling the data plane. In the data plane, there may be actually different ways, as I'm mentioning, the, the pub sub as well as the, the query, as well as being able to have that communication at different network transport layers, okay? So from there, um, as Scott was mentioning, I know this is kind of busy, but um, what we were trying to highlight is the evolution of where and how PX Grid came to. We talked about already the dynamic aspects of needing to have the agility of getting the data in different ways. In the initial uh, release of ICE, when uh, I think of the management and troubleshooting information as more of the data aggregation. As ICE can give you 
the full state because it's controlling the edge access control, if you will. It can give you dynamic state of an aggregated context, if you will, the who, what, when, where. So in that trying to get the information, you can, again, get the full historical ones through a directed query, or you can get the real-time updates. Okay, in the first instance, we found, you know, we, we our initial API was using an HTTPS um, transport channel, which meant that you need to keep pulling, and that could kill the bandwidth. So trying to provide that agility was something that was required. From the data plane, um, as we're mentioning, you might have location information, you might have posture information. How you, relay that, how you relay that information can come through different data models, okay? Not necessarily APIs, but the, the information models will differ just because location is expressed differently than a threat response, if you will. So needing to provide that level of agility and flexibility in that ecosystem was also a hard requirement. And then finally, from a performance scalability, needing to extend it as we're now, especially in the threat ecosystem, in the threat intelligence systems, as we're trying to tie in all of the different IOCs, if you will, right? Indicators of compromise, threat intelligence reports, vulnerability, tying that in with posture servers, all of them now can be tied in, right? In a highly scalable way. Okay, so. More about the client itself. What you're getting in the SDK, as I mentioned, is the set of APIs. You can get it in two flavors, either C or Java, depending on your programming preferences. Um, we currently have lots of documentations and tutorial. There's uh, an actual sandbox in the DevNet that you can load, so we highly encourage you to do that. When you come into the DevNet, um, you can go into the security section. You can't miss us. We are the first ones in the security one to have the sandbox for you to play with. So when there, you'll find a lot of the documentation tutorials where we'll have the English descriptive, if you will, that walks you through what's happening in the code. So you'll see the two panes. You'll see the actual sample XML as well as code snippets for how um, and to me, it's really trivial, right? It, it's, right. Um, it's a couple of calls that basically says, this is how I want to join the grid. We show you the example um, in our sandbox, how you can join. And um, so right now, we can obviously share the ICE information. So we show you how you can extract that through the APIs. And then you'll see the English descriptions that walk you through that, okay? So that's in the documentation. We're still open to take feedback, so please play, play with it. If there are things that we can improve on, let us know as well. But all of that is available. Um, in the sandbox, obviously, we've got a dedicated um, uh, server in there so that you can actually play with, with the data extraction and so on. Okay, so, and I think you may be, there may be workstations there that you can play with too on that side, okay? Okay, so a little bit more about what you will be seeing. So likely what you will be seeing is you're gonna get the, the SDK, the library itself, right? Okay, so in the library, whether it's C or Java, you're gonna see calls for how you connect to the server. Pretty soon, as I mentioned, think about this as as the way to establish the many-to-many -many connection. If you think about your instant messaging or your jabbers, you can know um, the individual, right? So, so we equate that to, I know that it's, you know, nancy at cisco.com. You may now know, instead of that particular resource, you know that you may want to look at posture information. So that may be a specific topic that you can directly register and subscribe to. If you're not sure, if you're trying to develop new reforms, so as Scott was saying, to be able to do this dynamically in the future, right, is that you may buy another resource from a third party, right? You may consign another SIM vendor. That could come through the discovery mechanism and the controller. 
So um, we'll be showing you examples of that. That you won't see in the DevNet um, sandbox yet. That'll be coming later in a later release. But basically, in the connection library, what you're going to see is the API calls that you establish once, meaning once you connect to the grid, that is it. You only need to do that. Then the controller will help manage the security authorizations, if you will, so that you don't have to establish multiple authentications, as Scott was saying, to the many-to-many. -to -many. You do it once. We handle the security aspects of the authentication and the authorization for whether you're allowed to access the data and how you're allowed to access the data as well. Okay? Okay. So, as part of the authorization, okay, the authorization is the implicit way in which we and the controller can filter the data, but you also have the way of doing it more directly. So, as Scott was mentioning, we may have a richness of information. So if you look at the ICE um, solution itself, we can describe to you the username, the role that user um, is assigned to when they come into the network, the part of the network they came in from, their posture, device classification, and so on. You may decide that you may just want to restrict, instead of getting all of those different attributes, you just want to know the user and the device that they're attached to. So you can do that um, schema-based filtering, or you can actually say, I just want to get the updates of all of the sessions that are coming in from engineering, or you can get all of the sessions that are you know, using Macs, right? So that's more of the content-based filtering. OK. So I'm not going to read this to you. I think the slides are available. So um, this is basically the instructions for how you can come in, install both the controller as well as the client. So you can come in and use it. Um, highly encourage you to go through the tutorials and the sample code so that you can start with that as your template, because that it all initiates with you authenticating, well, your application authenticating into the controller, and then you going in and, and doing the work, okay? Okay, so um, as we mentioned, there are two main different ways in which you can extract the data. You can do it through a synchronous mechanism, meaning what I call a directed query, okay? And for those, we have a couple of different mechanisms where you can get the short update of just, as I mentioned, right? You can do the content-based filtering. I just want to see, you know, Nancy's attributes, for example, right? You can do a full, what I'll call a synchronization type query, where you may do a query to say, I want to get the whole state of what ICE is seeing right now. So that's in the, the query um, functions. The second type of functions is the registration by which you register to come in and say, I actually want to get the real-time updates, the notification, right? So you come in and register or subscribe in the XMPP speak and say, I want to get the ICE information. And even in there, again, you can say, I just want the updates for, and here's the criteria, the filtering criteria to do that. Okay. So there are sample scripts in the SDK that you get um, for you to do this. So the example that I highlight, the other powerful tool that Scott mentioned is not only now can you start doing the monitoring and doing some levels of aggregation yourself as you correlate the different types of information that can be made available to you through the PX grid, but now you can also do remediative actions, right? So you can either do further investigations or you can, how many of you are familiar with change of authorization radius, right? So it's a simple example of what we do with the application network control with ANC, right? And so basically now, if you look at the correlated information and you feel that you need to affect a change in the network controls, you can do that through the ANC, okay? 
This is a very powerful tool because now you can dynamically, programmatically change the behavior of your network. And so this is where it becomes really important to come in through the PX Grid controller because through that controller, and of course you need to define the policies of who's allowed to affect that type of function, okay? Okay, so um, I've got a couple more slides here. So this is, not kind of, this is what you're gonna see when you come in to the DevNet. Um, once you come into the DevNet, you log in, you click in on the uh, security slot, and then you can select the PX Grid screen, and then from there, you can, um, once you've selected the PX Grid, you'll be able to come in and uh, all of the documentation and the tools for you to play with are there. So this is just a snapshot of what to expect to see. And I think with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, I'm Chris Cheppy. I'm the founder of ID over IP, and we're a developer working in the PX Grid ecosystem. I have about 10 to 15 minutes, and I thought what would be useful would be to walk through some specific use cases that we've implemented, and hopefully that'll trigger some thinking on your part about why PX Grid is so powerful. My background is in identity and access management. So these are the software tools that determine who can access what application and what level of authorization, what level of access they can gain. Traditionally in the identity and access space, we've relied on things like a directory server for information that tells us who a user is and what they can do, what roles they have, and what they should be allowed to access. And that's been effective, but I think we're, we all know we're moving into an era where data that's stored in a directory, fixed data, is not sufficient to make an accurate assessment of whether the person requesting a resource should really be allowed to access that resource. And this is why PX Grid is so attractive to us as identity management practitioners and as developers looking for ways to make applications more secure. What we've learned working with customers is they, they view the challenges that we're facing as a policy enforcement question. And they don't have the tools to effectively enforce policy how can they effectively enforce policy? It's this gluing together and sharing of context information across security systems that enables the effective enforcement of policy. And I'm gonna talk about some specific use cases that I think highlight that. But why PX Grid is so powerful from our perspective and why we've invested our resources as a developer in the PX Grid ecosystem is because we feel this sharing of context is a very, very impactful and, uh, functionality that we're bringing to our customers working with, working with Cisco. It's context sharing as it's a critical piece. So the two, two, two use cases that we've developed um, that I want to talk about are single sign-on based on uh, authentication to the network. From a security policy perspective, the problem we're solving is that the, at a CIO level or executive level within IT organization, they hate passwords. And so the proliferation of passwords or the number of times you have to use a password as a credential, it's a nightmare. The number of times you have to present a credential, that all of that is attack surface. So what are ways that we can limit the number of times passwords are used? We can share context out of the network. And so by dialing back the authentication event to the network authentication, using PX Grid through the directed query that Nancy described, we actually do a session query against uh, PX Grid. We can return information about all of the devices that have been authenticated via 802.1x. And the information that we return is the user, the, the device they're on, information about the device that they're on, how they authenticated, whether they've come in through a VPN or whether they're on the local network, what switch they came through, a whole set of contextual information that's real time. And that's really important from an identity and access management perspective. We've been looking at the directory We've been looking like at a password, a username and a password and roles that are stored in a directory, and that can get stale, that can get out of sync with what's really happening in the business. The information we get out of PX Grid is real time, 
And so by collecting that context at access time, we can give the user access without having them log in again. We eliminate the need for passwords. And that's been very powerful. The way we do it at ID over IP, we focus on cloud applications. So think about single sign-on into box.com or salesforce.com or into web applications that might be developed around your organization. We can give people access to those applications, secure access, authenticated access, based on 802.x, and that is enabled through PXGrid. So that context sharing enables this really powerful way of eliminating passwords. And so that's, that's this concept that is pulling our customers to look at doing more and more work against PXGrid. The second use case is the idea of making an authorization decision. So really making a decision about what a user should be allowed to do based on the contextual information that exists about the type of device or the OS or the way they have authenticated, whether they've come in through a VPN, what office location they happen to be in. We're doing pattern matching against some of this information to say, well, this is what we expect a user to be doing. This is what they happen to be doing in real time. If that matches up, that's great. That's a green state for us. Let them go do whatever they want to do in a cloud application. Let them see reports in salesforce.com. But if it doesn't match up, maybe it's a yellow state and we want to throw a second factor authentication at them. Or if it's a red state and it looks really questionable, we want to do something to them like change their authorization or boot them off the network. We're only able to do this by sharing context from the network up to the identity and access management um, system. So it's a, very, it's a very powerful example of how a company might have a policy that says you can only access an application if you're on a managed, app, uh, a managed device. So if we give you the laptop that you're using and we manage it, then you can go and, and use confidential documents in a cloud application, or you can look at patent research in a web application that we've built. That's a business policy. They can't enforce that policy unless they can connect the, the security tools that know whether a device is managed with the application, the, poly, the enforcement rules, the access control rules in the application. And so our tool allows them to share that information and effectively enforce the policy. And I think from a from a policy perspective, from a security perspective, where we're moving is from an explicit event, like your login is an explicit event, you provide me with a credential, it tells me who you are, that's very explicit. And that's been the traditional model. I think we've seen that break down because other people might have your credentials. Bad actors might have your credentials. We're moving to an implicit and continuous way of identifying who you are and what you should be allowed to do. So it's not just your credential, that's an important part of it. But it's other things like what device are you on? What location are you in? What network are you coming from? How does ICE represent your security group tag? And we can evaluate all that in real time and create a, bit, a, a broader picture that gives us a much higher level of assurance of who you are. And that happens in the background. So I think we're, where we're moving is toward a world where maybe there's only one explicit event for the user, but there's all of this connectivity between different security systems that says implicitly behind the scenes, this looks green to us, or this looks yellow to us, or this looks red to us. And that's, for me, that's the power of PXGrid, is it's an API that's unique in its ability to connect this contextual information across security systems, and then it provides us business benefit. You can map that directly to a business conversation where you say, here's how to enforce this business policy that says only managed laptops can access these confidential pieces of information in, in a given time frame or that sort of thing. So um, that's sort of, you know, Scott has this broad set of ecosystem partners that are doing functions across a lot of different <clears throat> technical areas. We focus on, on, just, on just this one aspect of it, identity and access management, but we've created all of this value for the customers that we're working with. And I think what I hope, I hope you guys can see as developers to trigger some thinking about how the, the technical area that you're working in could benefit from this context sharing. It's a powerful concept. I think it's new for a lot of us. The idea of connecting the network layer to the application layer, just that organizationally can sometimes be a challenge. But this is definitely where we see large organizations moving. And the developers play such a key role in that gluing. I think this is a great opportunity for all of us. Um, 
think I covered this a little bit in the technical detail of what we do is really based on the directive session because we want to find out about a specific user in real time. So we query by IP, we do an association with a unique session identifier that, that um, ICE maintains so we get around natting issues or, or uh, redundant IPs. And once we have that session identified, then ICE gives us all of this real-time contextual data. We've built our tool in Java. The development tools that Scott's team have put together uh, make it very simple to bootstrap and get going and prototype and, and get a sense for how sharing this context can really be uh, of benefit. So um, I'm happy to connect with any of you to share our experience and, uh, and the, the sort of um, uh, the depth of, of knowledge we have around coding against PXGrid, about developing a value proposition of why you want to do that, and then also all the way down to the technical detail of which client libraries and how, how we architected our solution. I'm happy to get into that detail with, with any of you offline. I think I covered most of this, but ultimately, Context sharing, it's a very technical topic, but it provides very real business value. I mean, you're lowering the risk of doing fundamental business processes by sharing the context. And again, we're just working in this identity and access slice. If you take the totality of what they put together, it's a very powerful story. So um, this is the direction where, where things are, are, are certainly headed. And then um, one other aspect that we've learned in talking to customers is, because we're extending the value of tools they might have already deployed, the operational impact is very low. So we're dealing with something that has a very high value to management, but with a really low operational impact. They don't have to deploy a whole uh, additional set of infrastructure. They enable PXGrid, and these APIs allow this context sharing between systems that are already running. And that's been very attractive to the customers uh, that we've talked to. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to hand it back over to Scott to sum up. I'm going to hang out afterwards. So like I said, if anybody, any of you have any specific questions about what we've implemented or how we've done it, I'm happy to share details. All right, so thanks, Chris. It. Can you guys hear me again? Hello, hello. Um, so I'll, uh, Chris was being very modest. I'll even take it one step further. So Chris has worked with some of our other um, development partners to actually, since they have familiarity with PXGrid, to actually do some work and help and do some consulting work to help get platforms integrated. So you can also talk with them about that. Um, I'd like to point one thing out before we end the session here. Has anyone noticed what a really weird building this is? This is basically a tent. It's very strange. I got sump pumps over here. It's very weird. Anyway, um, so I'll just you know, wrap it up here in terms of, I think you got the message loud and clear, hopefully, that uh, this is about context sharing. It's about enabling you to take actions in the Cisco network on users and devices. We got a very, um, at this point, mature, because we use it both internally and with 18 external partners and plenty more in the pipeline. Um, SDK, test libraries, tutorials, really just go out to cisco.com slash go slash pxgrid, and everything you need to get started is there all the way through, not just to get started, all the way through certifying your solution is there. So it's soup to nuts. And I'll just leave you with that. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>